What's happening guys? It's Nick Che coming back at y'all with another video. Lately I've been getting a lot of comments saying that there's someone else in Paris, uh, another YouTuber, someone I should connect with. Um, you guys have been asking for it, so I'm very excited to announce fellow Yale YouTuber, Josh Beasley. What's up guys? I'm happy to be here. So today we're going to be doing a video talking about college life at Yale versus Princeton. We thought it'd be a great idea to show you our different perspectives and just get different insights on things. So let's just jump right into it. Let's get into it. Alright, so we're going to be doing a part one, part two series on both of our channels. So make sure you guys go check out the link down below um, to see the other side of the video. So when it comes to extracurriculars and clubs in college, you will quickly realize that there are literally dozens, if not hundreds of things you can participate in. Um, some of the craziest things, I can't even think of anything off the top of my head, but Anything you're passionate about, I'm sure there's some kind of club related to it. So personally speaking, I play clarinet in the orchestra, I do photography, I do film. And aside from the academic course load, it's still really important and kind of vital to your college experience to be participating in these clubs and extracurriculars so that you find a new group of friends, you get out of your comfort zone, you, do, you try something new. Yeah, so just going off of what Nick said about the crazy number of clubs there are at colleges, just for example, at Yale there is an anti-gravity club. <laughs> of students dedicated to the art of juggling. We have a Texas barbecue club and they get money to host a barbecue once a semester. And that is awesome. Even me personally, I guess my biggest extracurricular involvement is uh, I'm in Air Force ROTC at Yale, which is, which is huge for me. Um, that's definitely a big time commitment each week, but I've developed a great group of friends. I look forward to going into the Air Force after college. Ask questions. No, uh, no merci. Good price. No, no merci. <laughs> We just got asked if we wanted beer or wine champagne. You do? <laughs> <laughs> Demonetize. <laughs> Along with RTC, I'm in the Yale Undergraduate Aerospace Society. I, I've spent the past year working on a satellite that we're hoping to launch soon. And I guess my coolest extracurricular is uh, I'm actually a magician. So uh, I'm in the Yale Magic Society and it's a lot of fun. We actually went on tour in Costa Rica over winter break. Oh, that's year. another great thing is that joining these clubs and organizations will get, also give you great opportunities to travel. Like next year, the orchestra is going to Barcelona and Madrid fully paid for. So make sure you hop on that right away, get involved as quickly as possible. And that way you'll make some friends um, and try things that you wouldn't have. Yeah, definitely. But at the same time, going into freshman year, it's easy to get overwhelmed with the academic workload. So as great as extracurriculars are, we emphasize that your academics should be your priority and then your extracurriculars um, should be able to balance out what you're passionate about. Yeah, one other great thing I found about extracurriculars in college is that in high school, uh, I'm sure you felt this, you, you feel like you're constantly forced to do things just to put them on your resume or put them on your college application. Resume patterns. Yes, and in college, there's, there's none of that. Obviously, you want to be prepared if you want to go to graduate school or pursue other careers. But for the most part, you finally have a chance to do exactly what you want to do. And what you'll find out very quickly as soon as you get to college is that you don't have enough time to do everything you want to do. I remember when I went to the Yale extracurricular fair, like the second week of school, I put my name on like the list of like 10 different clubs. Pro tip, do not <laughs> put your name on the listservs for every single club that asks you. Planned on doing a lot of extracurriculars, but by the second or third month, that list of extracurriculars is going to be whittled down to probably three or four things that you're very passionate about. It's just hard to find time, especially oh, with the on. course. Hey, We're filming in front of the Eiffel Tower right now, and if you've never been, there are a bunch of people who just try and sell drinks to everyone all the time. It, actually, it's kind of annoying. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, so I think, I think overall, when it comes to extracurriculars, just remember quality, not quantity. Make sure that you're being actively involved. Um, freshman year, you might not be eligible for any leadership positions or anything like that. So just make sure that you find something you're passionate about and just really put your all in it. Yeah, I completely agree. This might be a little contradictory to what we said before, but that the academic workload is a lot and at times it does get pretty intimidating um, knowing that it can and will affect your GPA, especially coming from an Ivy League school where if you're not on top of your stuff all the time, then you will very easily fall behind. You will very easily fall behind. I think the biggest thing is that being at an Ivy League school, you're surrounded by so many intellectual people and very well accomplished people. It's it's easy to feel like like you don't deserve a spot or that you aren't worth it or that you're imposter six, syndrome. Imposter syndrome. That's that's what it is. It's that it's a feeling of I don't belong here. I don't I didn't deserve to get in. I was in valedictorian. I have a perfect score, but everyone else here seems to have that. When in reality, it's not. I think it took me a long time to realize that everyone's down to earth. There are very few people who were Nobel Prize winners or anything like that. It's, it's if you were to look at these people's like resumes or their college applications, you would be absolutely blown away. 
but you meet these people in person at like at meals or at parties and you just have a conversation with them and it's not till like a week or two later that you realize that they played violin solos for the president of the United States or that they founded a nonprofit and are an, on a first name basis with the North Carolina governor. Stuff like that. It's just, it's, it's absolutely crazy the people you meet and sometimes it can feel a little overwhelming that you that you don't necessarily belong but at the end of the day you're all there together and, and if you're spending all your time worrying about how you fit in you're not learning from each other if getting into the ivy league is one of your top priorities we highly recommend checking out our sponsor of today's video crimson education if you've been watching either of our channels for a while i guarantee you you've been recommended at least one of crimson education's videos that are created to help students get into top ranked colleges their main goal is to help connect students with a team of experts, strategists, and tutors to best prepare yourself for the college application, whether it's essay brainstorming or SAT prep tutoring, or just having a game plan to tackle your college ap application. The best part is, is that it actually works, and Crimson has had over 460 offers to top 50 colleges just since 2015. And if you're an international student, don't worry, Crimson has over 25 offices across the globe. If you've ever felt lost in the college application process or want to make yourself stand out amongst the thousands of other applicants that are going to be applying to these schools, definitely check out the link below and Crimson will help you come up with a tailored plan that is affordable and customized to your needs. A lot of our friends at Princeton and Yale have used college consulting services similar to Crimson and they've only had good things to say as it kind of creates a support system for you as you're preparing for college applications and studying in high school. So make sure you guys check out the link down below and they'll have plenty of options for you to choose from and you won't regret it. All right, so we've talked about extracurriculars and academics. Now we're gonna break it down into like what a typical week looks like at one of our schools. Um, so at least for Yale, most of your classes will fall on either Monday and Wednesday or Tuesday and Thursday. And there's some Friday classes, but most of the time they end before noon. At least for me, along with these classes, I spend probably two to three hours studying each day and then another hour or two in office hours asking questions and preparing myself for whatever problem sets might be due. And then most of the extracurricular meetings will normally be later in the evening, 9 or 10 p.m. You'll do a quick hour-long meeting. Maybe we're prepping for a magic show or writing some code for the satellite. Um, and that will fill in a lot of your free time. And then most of the time, as Ivy League students, we, we, don't, we don't get to bed very early. Um, a lot of times we'll be working on stuff or just hanging out with friends, talking in our suites till 12, 1, 2, sometimes 3 in the morning. But, you know, it's college and it's a great time. Along with all this work, uh, we also like to have a lot of fun in college. Uh, That's true. Fridays and Saturdays are super popular nights to go out at Yale. There's fraternity parties, there are local restaurants and stuff that put on events. Um, and I guess a very popular Yale tradition when it comes to going out is Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights at Yale are known as Wodes. At Yale, we have a dance club on campus called Toads, right in the middle of campus on oh. York Street. It's it's That's a really crazy. yeah it's a it's a really great time and every Wednesday they host dance parties only for Yale students. So you show your Yale ID at the door and you get into this wild Wednesday night That'd dance so party. Sick. Yeah, they go till like one or two in the morning. It's a great time. And for me, schedule's pretty similar. You know, I tend to not be a morning person, so I like to schedule my classes in the afternoon, maybe Same. ten or eleven thirty, <laughs> just so you can sleep in a little bit more. Um, you go to classes up until about one or two, and then afterwards I have a few hours to study, go to office hours, um, get ready for an essay or a test. And then right around five or six is dinner time, so I meet up with some friends, I'm sure the same. Yeah. And then um, from like seven to nine is probably like studying time, cram time, just getting ready for whatever is coming up that week. For us, the bigger nights are Thursday and Saturday, so everyone goes out to what we call the street, which is where all the eating clubs are held. We'll get into all that a little bit later, but it's always a great night. All your friends are out there. Um, you just have fun, relax, because even though you are at an Ivy League school or whatever school you're at, it doesn't really matter. It's always good to just relax, unwind, because there's no point in working so hard if you don't find the time to relax and enjoy college for what it is, because we're young, you know, we should be living life. And like Josh was saying, there are nights where you will be up until two or 3 a.m., whether it's studying for a test, doing some homework, crying over an essay or whatever. <laughs> but at the same time, there will also be nights where you're just up having conversations with your friends because you're just finding interesting stuff to talk about. Yeah. And, and I think that's a huge thing that we both found at our schools is that there are so many intellectual people that are just curious and, and love to talk. And I think coming from high school, people are much more open-minded, I'll, I'll say, right? And yeah, that definitely. people are wanting to learn. People want to argue. People want to debate over new perspectives. And that's perfectly fine. That's good yeah yeah what I found at Yale is 
every single person you encounter will have something about them. There's this certain thing that kind of makes yeah. them unique. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, everyone has that one passion, that one interest, that one thing that they did in the past that really just sets them apart, and you can tell that from the get-go. Now, I think a very common question we get is that, oh, how do you get into the Ivy League? Is it worth it? What's it like at an Ivy League school? After our first years of being there, I think that you know, it's great. There's so many opportunities, there's so many resources, and it's really cool having an Ivy League name, obviously. But at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world if you don't get into Harvard, Yale, Princeton, or whatever. I say this all the time to my friends, but college is really what you make out of it. It's what you put into it, you'll get that much out of it. There's a bird calling at us right now. <laughs> is it cool to be an Ivy League? Absolutely. Is it the end of the world if you don't get in? By no means. Yeah, going off of what Nick said, uh, if you guys have been watching my videos for a while, you know that I was pretty much set on Georgia Tech for like a solid four oh, really? months I know before I found out about my Yale acceptance. Like I'd already talked to one of my friends and uh, we were decided we were gonna be roommates and everything, but then I get my Yale acceptance and it changes everything. But the thing is, I feel personally that I would be just as happy at Georgia Tech. I would be just as happy at the University of Virginia. They're all great schools. And like Nick said, college is what you make of it. If you want to go into college with an open mind and set goals and have big ideas and that you want to share with other people, you can do that at any school. The Ivy League is not special in that in that way. It's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, but at the end of the day, it's, there's not that much that separates it from other schools. Okay, to kind of wrap up the video, we're just gonna do a quick like pros and cons of each of our schools. Um, as much as we do love our respective schools, there are kind of things that we dislike and wish we could improve on. So personally at Princeton, I think my favorite thing, and I'm sure it's the same at Yale, but it's just like the people that you meet. Like, I, like we said before, you meet some of the most intelligent people who have accomplished so much crazy things in their life. Um, you're constantly inspired and motivated by your peers to just do better and, and work harder every single day. So that's definitely been one of the most eye-opening things that when I got to college. All right, pretty similar to Nick. My favorite thing at Yale has to be the people. Um, no other time in my life will I be able to spend so much time living with such an amazing group of people. Like I said, everyone has their unique thing that sticks out about them. I have had some of the most interesting conversations I've ever had at school, whether it be me just sitting in a dining hall for two hours straight talking about everything, or me like up till 3 a.m. talking with one of Shut up, bro. God. Me staying up till like 3 a.m. in the morning talking about quantum mechanics with one of my sweet mates who's like a physics major. It's so many different people, so many different things to share, and to grow with each other. You learn from one another. I think that's the biggest thing is that you learn to take challenges to your perspective and grow from it, whether it's something that you believe in or someone might influence you to change your beliefs on. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing our different lives at Yale versus Princeton. This is obviously a very special opportunity to be doing a collaboration in Paris of all places, which is crazy. But you guys only saw half the video. The other half is live on Josh's channel right now. Make sure you guys go check out his channel. Give him a subscribe. He's a great magician and he makes really great videos about college as well. That wraps it up for this. Please make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.